Hey, this is Joe with Grow Up Build It, and today I'm going to tell you how you can use autumn leaves to greatly improve your soil. So every fall when the leaves start to turn colors, I get a little excited. And it's not necessarily just because it's pretty. It's also because I'm about ready to get a huge resource in the form of leaves. Now, people probably think of leaves as using it as a brown material when making compost or piling it up to make leaf mold. I've come to use it in a single way, which is just to apply it to my gardens directly as mulch. And that has shown to be the single best thing I've ever done to improve my soil fertility. You know, I have suburban backyard, horrible soil, which you can see on the left, which is in my lawn and on the right is actually just out in my garden. Um, the color difference is pretty much all just due to the organic matter. So in this video, we're going to cover what is leaf mulch, the benefits, some do's and don'ts, and then a detailed explanation of what I did last year and what I'm doing this year. So let's have a look. So leaf mulch is exactly what it sounds like. It is just leaves that are piled up in your garden. So get leaves, put them in there. You can shred them or not shred them. Either way, I mean, that's all it is. It acts as a mulch in a flower bed or a vegetable garden. Um, so for the benefits of leaf mulch, though, there's leaf mulch, there's about six. And the first one is it's going to add a lot of organic matter to your soil. And in adding the organic matter to your soil, it's going to improve your drainage. It'll reduce compaction. And the way it's going to happen is some of it's going to trickle down, but really once the worms start eating those leaves in the spring, they're going to travel down deeper into your soil, reducing compaction, and they're going to poop out worm castings essentially. Um, and also by doing that, they're going to be improving your soil fertility. Now there is no shortage of university studies documenting how leaves will improve soil fertility. Um, our website has a detailed table with the rough percentages you can get of nitrogen or NPK for fertilization. Um, if you want to see those numbers, just Google Grow It, Build It Leaves, and you will have no problem finding uh, that study as well as the other uh, ones that I reference and cite. Um, it's really a big boost though that you can get. In addition to that, it's going to improve your water retention. Organic matter improves water retention, and it does it so well and so predictably that uh, they can actually make regression equations that'll predict how much water can be held in soil based on the amount of organic matter present. And this is, they did this 40 years ago, and it fit pretty well. Um, the next one is leaf mulch will improve mineral availability. So tree roots go way deep down into the ground. They pull minerals, they transfer those up through the tree to the leaves, leaves fall back down and uh, make them available again. Well, when people throw their leaves out, you can get that, you know, those leaves and get those minerals for your garden as well as the other nutrients. Um, next one is a really nice benefit is it reduces weeds. When you have a layer of organic matter, a thick layer um, on top of your soil, it's going to block sunlight from hitting weed seeds and prevent them from a lot of them from germinating. Now I still get weeds in my garden, um, but I really only had to weed my garden about two or three times. And I mean like, you know, spending an hour out there weeding. Um, it mainly looked like this all year. You know, it, it, the leaf mulch really did a huge service to me in that I didn't have to uh, pull weeds as much as I had in the past. So I was very happy about that. And lastly, leaf mulch is free. You can get leaves for free. People throw these out all the time, you know, trash bags will show up on the street filled with leaves. Um, you can just get them and throw them in your car. Uh, you can drive around in October, November and do it. So some do's and don'ts. Do, collect them from the street. You know, this is a bordering some land that nobody owns in my neighborhood. Also, shred your leaves if you want to increase the time to, you know, or reduce the time to decompose. Um, increasing the surface area to volume ratio will make it happen faster, basically. Um, some things to avoid is if you're trying to, if you till them into your soil, they're probably going to rob nitrogen from the surrounding soil. You know, that's because dried leaves are a nitrogen uh, sink. Uh, they're a brown material used in compost. Also, if you have black walnut trees nearby, don't take those leaves. Um, they have a chemical called juglone in them that is toxic to certain plants. We have a complete listing of that um, at our website. If you look, grow up, build it, black walnut, you can find all that information there. Um, and... Uh, I mean, the, the juggling will go away over time. Like you, I, mean, I compost with black walnut shavings myself, but uh, just be aware of it. Okay, so what did I do last year? This is October of 2019. I'm just getting started to putting leaves down. But before we do that, I wanna show you what my soil looks like when you're just digging it into a little bit. Um, if you just take a little shovel full, you can see that I have a very thin black layer of soil and it is quickly turns orange. I know this was sunset when I was doing this, so the lighting's not good, but... Um, Basically, this was year three, and I had maybe a maybe an eighth of an inch, three millimeters, six millimeters of black layer on top of my horrible crap suburban backyard. And anyone who's watched my grass videos knows that I have bad soil. 
like there's no organic matter but i have a neighbor up the street who has six or eight of these giant maple trees and halfway through the year last year of leaves falling he said i could have his leaves so i happily took them and i ended up with 35 bags of those black trash bags with leaves in addition to my own and adjacent yard leaves and um I happily applied them. I ended up with six to 12 inches of leaves. So that's uh, 15 to 30 centimeters. And I had that on my garden and that was it. I uh, did, I just, you kind of just leave them in place. Now, one observation, when you get them off the trees right away, it was kind of interesting when they're still pliable and have some moisture, they'll start hot composting in place, which I didn't expect, but I was happy to see it. Uh, but anyways, um, yeah, I just left them. So they were there for the winter. Now I did go out and turn them a couple of times. Um, I really don't think this was necessary. I don't plan on doing it this year, but I just want to let you know I did do this. Um, I just figured mixing it up might help speed things along. I, but anyways, I left them in place and they, they kept compressing themselves over time, which they will. And if I skip ahead to May, right after I have planted out my garden, um, you can see that the leaves are still there, but they look a little different. And if we actually um, zoom into the top layer of soil, you can clearly see what the compacted leaves are now. They're very compacted, very layered up, um, but I still have that thin black layer, which is circled in blue versus the actual leaf mulch, which is circled in green. So that's what it looks like at this point. And here's a side-by-side -side of what the soil looked like in October, 2019 versus May. So pretty much the same, except for the addition of leaves. Now we're looking at July and there, this is what it looks like. There really isn't any uh, leaves that are, you can't, I mean, you can tell it's leaves, but it's not that identifiable. And I've got little bits of weeds that pull easily. Now we're looking at October and the leaves are just, you can't tell they're there at all. I have two to three inches of basically composted or broken down leaves on top of my bad soil. And I'm very happy about it. Also, you can see how crumbly and nice and organic it is and all the white fibrous roots from my surrounding vegetable plants, which love this stuff. I really had the best uh, year I've ever had. And if we look here, the color contrast in wet soil is quite dramatic. Um, you know, the proof is in the color here. So I showed you a sample from my lawn on the left and my garden on the right. I'd like to show you exactly where I took those. Um, they're both six inch deep samples. I was doing this for my mason jar testing and uh, just to see the difference between the two. And I want to point out the color of the liquid. The one on the left is the garden and it has black liquid where the one on the right is red, which is, it could be iron, I'm not entirely sure, but there's no organic matter, that's the point. So this is the garden and here is where I'm about to take my soil sample. This is about five feet outside the fence. And I'm really trying to take shovelfuls that are straight down as best that I can. And then in the vegetable garden, I'm five feet on the other side of the fence. And again, I'm trying to take uh, straight down. Now, the thing is, is we all know the results here. Um, you know, the vegetable garden is going to have several inches of good black soil and three inches of not so good soil. Um, but it's still kind of neat to see just how much difference you actually get. But it was when I was doing this testing that I could see such a dramatic color change that I was like, wow, I really did something good for my uh, vegetables. I already knew I had because I had the biggest plants I'd ever had um, that year. But um, this transformation in a single year at no cost was just amazing to me. Um, so what are we doing now? Well, this year I talked to my neighbor before the leaves started to fall and I ended up being able to get um, all of his leaves, which resulted in 59 black trash bags of leaves that were dumped. Now, I did mow a lot of these up, not all of them, because I'd get them day after day, but I did mow quite a few up. I found the most efficient way to do this is just dump the leaves down and mulch the leaves in place, as long as I get rid of my rocks that I tend to have everywhere. But yeah, in the end, I ended up with basically one foot of uh, leaves. Now, the grading on that is two inches by four inches on the fence, so I have 12 inches of leaves or 30 centimeters leaves on the whole garden. So this is doubling it. If there is an upper limit as to how good of, uh, or how much leaves you can have, maybe I'll find it, I don't know. So ask in the comments and I'll try to post updates um, throughout the year if I get reminded to. But uh, this is really an awesome thing that you should be doing on your garden. Of all the soil improvement activities I've done, this one had the largest impact in the shortest amount of time in the least cost for sure. Looking at side-by-side -side comparisons of what my soil was to what it is today, with that big thick layer of organic matter on top is really kind of awesome. Um, 
So uh, about us a little bit, we are just a husband and wife of backyard gardeners. Um, we just turned a patch of crap suburban soil into a very well producing vegetable garden. Um, we do have a number of other videos that we're gonna be putting into a playlist of everything that we've done that you might find useful, like making compost, uh, testing the soil texture of your yard, the drainage of your yard, seeing if there's any areas that you can do some improvement. But uh, making leaf mulch is something you absolutely should be doing because of it has a huge impact at minimal cost and not that much effort, really. Um, it's changed the way I look at things because now when I see autumn leaves, I don't just see beauty, I see a resource that I'm about to tap. So again, if you have questions, ask them in the comments. I'll try to answer them. Uh, thank you guys very much. And give me a thumbs up and subscribe if you want to see more of this.